Okay, we're live. Hi, Dr. Barnett. Good to see you. It's great to see you, Yashoda. How are you today? I, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Great, great. Thank you for organizing this. Of course, it's my pleasure. I've yeah. been wanting to do this for a long time, so I'm hoping that the other physicians find it really helpful. So um, I'm just going to introduce you. Uh, this is Dr. Ted Barnett. I consider him one of my friends, one of my plant-based doctor friends. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, and so thank you so much. I mean, I want to first of all thank our audience for taking the time to come and be with us. I think, you know, we are facing a moment in history where, with, especially with the pandemic, it's really coming to the forefront how important it is as a group of physicians that we speak up for the well-being of our patients um, as well as the planet. I think we all need to be socially responsible. And uh, there's really no other better way to do this than through the modalities of lifestyle medicine. Um, so I met Dr. Barnett, we have a little funny story, and uh, <laughs> we met at a plant-based conference. We were in the same shuttle bus from the hotel. We were all going out to dinner. We hadn't introduced ourselves then. But, uh, but we asked, like, actually, Dr. Barnett asked the driver if he knew of any vegan restaurants, and the driver said, oh, yeah, I'm going to take you to this mall, and there's all kinds of restaurants, and this really good seafood place and steak that you should try out. <laughs> So it was kind of funny, but then, yeah, we ended up having dinner with uh, Dr. Barnett and Susan uh, was there as well, your business partner, and, Ke and uh, Kylie was my friend, so that was kind of funny. But, um, but anyway, Dr. Barnett, I really, really appreciate, I see you're working, I mean, you probably have 100 x-rays to get back to, so I really appreciate your time that you're taking to be here. Um, so I'm going to pass the mic on to you, and if you could just maybe introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about how all of this came about. Sure. So um, some people know me as Dr. Veggie, as you can see on the screen there. Um, I am referred to as the high-tech doctor with low-tech solutions. So I'm an interventional radiologist, and I'm sure most of you know what that is. So, you know, I do um, angioplasties and stents and things like that. You know, cardiologists get the credit for doing doing those because they do the heart, but we do the rest of the body and of course they get all the credit. But anyway, um, you know, back in 1991, I read the work of Dr. Dean Ornish uh, and that's when we decided to become vegan. Uh, my wife and I were, uh, we had two little girls at the time and a son on the way. So um, all three of our kids, I tell people, you know, we decided to perform an experiment on our children, uh, like any good parents, of course. And, and they, they came out okay. They're, they're uh, 27, 30, and 33 now. They've all been through graduate school and, um, you know, on, on their own and doing great. And they're all still totally plant-based. Uh, you know, we use the V word when we when we were among friends. We do call ourselves vegan. Um, but, you know, there's a healthy vegan and there's not so healthy vegan. And we teach a healthy vegan diet, uh, basically. And we refer to that as whole food plant-based, as I'm sure most of you know. And um, <clears throat> so we, uh, back in oh, 2012, started teaching a course on plant-based nutrition in the Rochester, New York area, and over 850 people have taken the course, and uh, it's uh, 12 CMEs, uh, and the course is open to the general public, but about 100 people have taken it for credit, maybe a little bit more, and uh, so we're kind of, you know, proud of that, and that's how, kind of how we got experienced uh, teaching it, and uh, teaching plant-based nutrition is by teaching this course, and also and giving grand rounds, and going on the radio, and various things like that. So then in 2015, we started Rochester Lifestyle Medicine, which is a, a medical group, which uh, is a theoretically for-profit. Uh, I continue to work uh, essentially full-time as a radiologist to support these, the money-losing venture that we started in Lifestyle Medicine. But it's, you know, it's, a, um, it's an act of love, and it's, a, you know, it's something that we're very, I'm very passionate about. My wife is very active in it also. And um, in 2017 is when we started Rochester Lifestyle Medicine Institute, which is our nonprofit. And so all the educational programs that we have developed have been through uh, Rochester Lifestyle Medicine Institute. And about two years ago, we developed um, uh, a program that we refer to as the 15-day whole, whole food plant-based jumpstart. And we've had over 400 people go through that. And we've been doing it in our office with 24 patients at a time. And we do a finger stick on day one and another finger stick on day 15 and people are very excited about the results they get because we put them on basically an Esselstyn diet 
And um, maybe I shouldn't use the term "put them on" because they do it at their, you know, they're all they're they're grown up. And we tell people, look, you, know, you're grown up, you can do anything for two weeks. And um, so it's been very successful. As I said, we've had over 400 people go through that. And then COVID-19 hit, and we had to adapt to that. So uh, we've developed an online version, which uses Zoom calls, and that's been a lot of fun. We've done that twice so far, and people seem to really like it. Uh, one of the challenges is, is we're not doing the, the, uh, the testing the way we had because, you know, patients are at home and they're doing it. And so we can't do the finger sticks, but we're working on, on, the, uh, on that. So um, we now basically realize once we've got the program online that we can really do it anywhere. And the, the, the plan had been all along was to um, uh, basically license this to doctors around the country so that they could run it in their offices. And uh, we had a lot of interest at the last um, uh, conference, uh, annual conference for the American College, College of Lifestyle Medicine. We had a lot of interest there. And, um, so um, people were you know, um, in the process of getting licensed and, and putting it on in their offices when the uh, epidemic hit. So it's actually been kind of interesting because now in some ways the barrier to entry has been lowered. So now we don't really charge anything to doctors who would like to use this in their practice um, because what we're doing is we're running the programs for them in a sense. So you might ask, well, what's in it for me as a physician, as if you're a lifestyle medicine practitioner? And that's a great question. You know, um, I've been doing this for a long time. And one of the things that's really surprised me, and I know Michael Greger feels the same way he talks about it, is, gee, if we've known this for so long, mm -hmm. why hasn't anything been done about it? Right? Why has right. medicine not changed? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I I began to think, well, you know, the only way we're going to get medicine to really change is to do this inside the medical system, inside the healthcare system. And I refer to that as marching into the belly of the beast. We've got to get this reimbursed and uh, part of standard medical practice. So um, we are getting reimbursed. We bill a lot of shared medical visits, and we'd love to work with other doctors to teach them how to do that. Uh, and um, you know, we're billing successfully for lifestyle medicine consults. So right now, our medical group is running as a specialty consultation service. And uh, of course, now we're adapting to do it by, uh, by video. But we have patients come in from, you know, and we are just, we're a consultant, just like a cardiologist. We don't take the patient away from their primary care doctor. The pr primary care doctors are still in charge and taking care of their medications, but we're teaching them about the, the pillars of lifestyle medicine and uh, having some reasonable success with that. But the real exciting thing for us is this 15 day jumpstart we have. So I've talked for a while. Do you have any questions about that? No, no, it's good. I mean, I, I think it was kind of a good sort of overview of you know how it started and how it sort of evolved to basically <clears throat> fit in with with uh, whatever is going on right now. Um, so what? So I understand that your patients basically are referrals from the primary care doctors and other physicians in your in your area. Is that correct? Right. So patients can actually sign up on their own, or they can be referred. Uh, and so basically we're encouraging, and I would say it's about 50-50, uh, a number of patients will show up because they say their doctor sent them there. Sometimes they'll say their spouse made them go. Um, and um, so they can basically, they, they sign up on our website and um, the way it had been running was they sign up on our website and we give the list of the patients to the doctor who's going to be then running it in their office. But what we're doing now is they sign up on our website and um, they once they and it's ninety nine dollars. It's you know very cheap, uh, and that's not billed to insurance. We just treat that as an educational expense. Um, that we we encourage physicians to see the patient before and after the jumpstart, and to bill that as a lifestyle medicine consultation. So basically, we're providing the curriculum uh, to help doctors who want to do lifestyle medicine, but maybe don't have their own curriculum, or realize that there's you know the power in having uh, of groups. So when the mm -hmm. patient signs up. Um, there's a, it's, it's basically three Saturdays are the main okay. parts of it. Um, now we've added a, a, a sort of a prequel. So the Wednesday before the first Saturday, we have everybody log in and make sure their Zoom connection is working uh, to um, give them, uh, make sure they have a shopping list so they can go purchase food for two weeks. And um, 
And the food they're purchasing is all going to be compliant with the Esselstyn program. And later on, I'll explain why we chose to teach the Esselstyn program. Um, mm -hmm. But um, they come, the, the, the way it's being run now is they, um, they start on the first Saturday. It's a two-hour session. They're introduced to the topic. They see a video of me uh, teaching it in front of a live audience, which we've recorded. Uh, and then there's time for a couple of other videos. And then there's time for question and answer. And then we expect the patients to then go and start eating that way on that first Saturday. The first mm -hmm. Sunday, the next day, there's a two-hour cooking class, uh, which we've recorded uh, in our offices uh, with this uh, wonderful local woman, uh, Ann Pampa, who's a, a, another force, a force of nature and does a great job teaching cooking, and our patients love that. And then um, sometime in the, in the next week, there's a, a one-hour check-in uh, where there's a one-hour get-together for the patients to discuss things, and it usually runs over a little bit. The second Saturday is kind of fun because in the past, we had them come to our office for a, um, um, a, a, a potluck where everybody would bring in a dish, a chair. They would then have to, uh, be, they would be called on and they would have to explain their recipe to the uh, other um, patients in the room and get into a conversation and people would talk about the problems they had finding the food and making the recipes. But usually it was just really, really lots of fun. So now we thought, well, We'll just do it by Zoom, and it actually works surprisingly well. Uh, patients bring their, you know, they take a picture of their food. They could actually hold it under the camera, but <laughs> we, we have them take a picture of the food, and they uh, send that in, and Bob puts it up on the screen. Uh, Bob is our engineer and our uh, main facilitator, and um, uh, very. And we'll tell you more about Bob later. Um, but anyway, so that's what our, how the um, uh, the second Saturday works. That's a, a two-hour um, uh, potluck. Then mm -hmm. the next the next week, there's another check-in during the week, Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, for about an hour. And then the third Saturday is a, a final presentation and a graduation, and they get a patient's get a certificate. And back when we were doing it in our office, that's when we did the second finger stick, and we'd say, hey, you know, your cholesterol just dropped 80 points. And they go, wow. oh, yeah, right, <laughs> right. And, um, and your blood pressure is normal. And, um, you know, so... Uh, to me, that was the most exciting day of my life as a clinician, uh, being able to basically watch the patient float off the chair. And of course, I would float off the chair because we'd give them the result. <laughs> you know, and, and we'll show you some, some of our data later on. Uh, on average, for people whose cholesterol is over 200, the average drop is 50 points in wow. 15 days. So it's really, uh, yeah, it's really exciting. And, you know, Dr. Esselstyn knows about our work and, you know, he's very excited about what we're doing. And, you know, he's given us an endorsement, and we're very you know, excited and proud about that. Um, but the reason I chose the Esselstyn program is because basically uh, I wanted to give the people the, the, the greatest chance of success. I didn't want to be in a position <laughs> where if something didn't work, I would say, well, I wanted to try this because maybe that's a little better or whatever. I basically, I think the Esselstyn program, I think pretty much cuts away everything that's, uh, uh, that's going to possibly get in the way of success. Uh, right. With, right. There's no so it's all totally whole food plant based, which everybody knows is oil free and you know whole plants, uh, but also takes away any high fat plant foods. Now after the two weeks, we encourage patients if they'd like to experiment a little bit and see what happens to their cholesterol. They add back in some nuts or olives, that type of thing, or avocado. Um, and you know if they have really bad heart disease, we maybe don't encourage that, or if they've got carotid artery disease or something like that. Because you know, that's been Esselstyn's experience is just to stay away from all the high-fat plant foods. Um, but you know, a lot of people can su can succeed with some high-fat plant foods in their diet. Uh, so we encourage them to experiment. I mean, one thing we've learned is that um, cholesterol is kind of like blood sugar; it can go up and down a lot. Um, not mm -hmm. quite as fast, not quite as fast as blood sugar. But diabetics are, or people with diabetes are checking their, you know, doing finger sticks twice a day or more to check their blood sugar. Why not check your cholesterol? you know, a couple times a month or, you know, once a month, because it will change fairly rapidly. And it's good to know what, you know, how your body responds to various foods. And we ask people to have a goal of a total cholesterol of under 150 and a, a LDL of under 80, which is what Dr. Esselstyn refers to as being heart attack proof. The other thing we really ask, the other thing we really emphasize is um, uh, eating lots of greens, right? We, we want to have greens, you know, six times a day, once before and after every meal. And uh, we really mean that, you know, uh, maybe you can do it three times a day if you're just having lots of greens with each meal. But the idea is to get tons and tons of greens in there, because as you know, uh, when you chew the greens, there's bacterial uh, interaction with uh, the greens and it raises nitrates and 
can lower your blood pressure. And it's just really healthy all the way around. And we want people to chew rather than make smoothies, but that's a whole other discussion. So, uh, yeah. and when they come to our office, people have really loved it. And it's been just really fun. They, they love to feel like they're part of something. Uh, I think the group dynamic is, is exciting. We've learned how to do group coaching. And um, yeah, so um, our goal here is to get, you know, some people out in the audience to try to sign up and try the program themselves. We encourage that. If they do, if you're a provider, we can, uh, we'd like you to do it for free. Uh, and uh, if you go to our website, the, um, what do we have? We have a, a, a discount code that takes it from $99 down to zero. And the, the code is LM, like lifestyle medicine, LM provider, all one word, but LM provider. And um, you can try it. And, uh, you know, it's worth it to us because we want to get the word out. Uh, as you probably guessed, I'm not in this for the money. Um, this is a, a, a labor of love. I'm very passionate about it. It's, I mean, I continue to work as a radiologist. That's how I support this. And everything that we make goes into our nonprofit just so we can reach more people. And our real goal is to make lifestyle medicine a viable career choice for young physicians. Because if it's not going to get reimbursed and you can't find any way to make money, then you're not going to do it because you've got to pay your staff and you've got to pay off your loans. And no one's ever going to take it seriously. You know, if the system can charge $40,000 for a gastric bypass, the system should be able to pay a few thousand dollars a year for lifestyle medicine to get people so they don't need the gastric bypass. And maybe they don't need a coronary artery bypass and all these right. other all these other expensive interventions. Yeah, 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 for sure. Well, you guys are doing an amazing job. I mean, there's no doubt about that. I think, <clears throat> you know, but like things, let me just in interject. So if there's, if the audience is watching this and wondering how they can interact with, uh, with, with Dr. Barnett, Please go ahead and put comments, and I should be able to see it on my screen, and then I can read it out to, to Ted, and he can answer your questions. So uh, please feel free to start um, putting comments in there as we keep, as we keep chatting. Um, so, so that's great. So you're encouraging physicians to do it. Have you had physicians sign up for your jump starts before, and how has that kind of changed, or you know, how has that affected the program? So that's a really interesting question. I mean, we got a grant from the local accountable care organization through the University of Rochester a couple of years ago for 40 of their doctors to take our plant-based nutrition course and uh, in, in the, for free. And then five of their patients would then be referred to our, our Jumpstart. And we basically completed the grant. We've had 40 doctors take the course. A number of those doctors then did do the Jumpstart themselves. And we've had a few pe uh, physicians who didn't do our course and weren't part of the grant just decide they would do the jumpstart anyway. I think it's really important uh, for physicians to understand the power of plant-based nutrition. I'm assuming that most of the people in the audience here have uh, already had that switch flip in their brain because until you see it happen in yourself, you're not really convinced. I mean, I still go back to the first, you know, my first day in as an intern or maybe I was a medical student, but the first time I ever saw a patient with a Foley catheter get a dose of Lasix, right? And, <laughs> yeah. and all of a sudden, all this urine starts to show up in the in the, in the Foley bag. And I'm thinking, wow, I guess what they said in medical school, but you know, it really works. Uh, and, <laughs> so, um, Cause it happens right away. And so um, the same thing is true with uh, the kind of um, benefit that people get from a whole food plant-based diet, especially the Esselstyn diet. You know, because doctors get sick too, right? There's, you know, we get heart disease, we get diabetes, we have, you know, there's obesity among physicians. Um, and I think it's really dramatic and powerful when they find out how effective it is for their own issues. Because doctors don't want to be sick either, and they want to be, you know, able to, to live life to the fullest. And this way they can be really convincing for their patients, I think. Um, you know, um, if, if your doctor is telling you to quit smoking and he's smoking a cigarette while he's telling you, you're probably not going to listen. And if you're yeah. right. And if your physician is overweight and di has diabetes, uh, you may have a harder time uh, being persuaded that whole, going on a whole food plant-based diet is the way to go. Whereas if your physician says, you know, I, I tried this diet myself and I lost a hundred pounds and it's been the best thing that's ever happened to me. In fact, the chief, the chief of cardiology at one of our local teaching hospitals did go through our plant-based nutrition course and he did become vegan himself and lost 90 pounds and became kind of a celebrity because once, you, once you're the cardiologist who goes plant-based and you lose a lot of weight, then you get invited, yeah. on, you get invited onto the local radio station. And yeah. 
So. Yeah, it's it's powerful when you see it in yourself, and then you really become a proponent of it. You know, you become passionate about it because you've seen it. It kind of happened. I mean, I wasn't, I didn't have a weight problem per se, but definitely improvement of health and more energy and feeling younger and all of that. That happened. Yeah. Nice switch. So it's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But, you know, and that a part of it, I think, is, you know, it's kind of like now how medicine has become where it really feels like as physicians, all we're doing is day after day writing prescriptions for the 15th drug. At some, at some level, it really starts weighing. I mean, it happened to me. I worked as a hospitalist. And after a while, it was like, what are we doing? We're just, you know, it's kind of like we're just trying to stem the flood and you just right. can't ever get um, get on, you know, get a control of it. I think right. Dr. Ornish says it really well, right? Like instead of mopping up, we should be like focusing on turning off the tap. Right, right. Oh yeah, the system is insane. Everybody knows the system is broken, uh, yeah. and yet we all keep doing the same thing because you know that's our job, and so yeah. somehow we have to. So that's not our job. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's say you are, you know, let's say we're you're looking at a 30 year old physician just starting on their career because I've had a lot of younger physicians join this group. What, what, and they're passionate about wanting to do lifestyle medicine, but again, like you mentioned earlier, it's kind of hard with reimbursements and, you know, all the other stuff that you have to see 25 patients a day just to make it. What kind of mm -hmm. um, tips would you give somebody like that? Like they really want to do this. In terms of more education for themselves, because <clears throat> obviously none of us get much nutrition education in medical school or residency, and then sort of some practical tips of like if you could just do anything you wanted, and how how would you sort of maybe advise? <laughs> I do remember you telling me don't quit your day job. So, <laughs> well, right. well, as a as a board member of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, I'm obligated to ask you all to join the American College of Lifestyle Medicine which has seen incredible growth. Uh, you know, uh, I think uh, it was about 10 years ago, it had about 130 members, and now there's over 4,000 members, and the curve is just doing this. It's just going, you know, it's uh, going, heading for the sky. And so that's really exciting. It's a great organization to be part of. You know, go to any of these plant-based nutrition conferences like uh, Plantrition or Peapod. Uh, they're the only conferences you'll ever go to where people are standing on their feet laughing, cheering, giving standing ovations to the speakers. You know, it's not going to be like your typical internal medicine conference or your typical radio mm -hmm. conference. Uh, in fact, until I went to my first plantrician conference about, uh, I think about eight years ago, um, I had only gone to radiology conferences. And uh, I still remember um, one of the speakers was a nephrologist from um, uh, Kaiser Permanente out in California. And he was he got up there and talked about how he wished he had known about this sooner and how excited he was for his patients. And then at the end of his talk, he started to cry. And mm -hmm. I thought, wow, I've been to a lot of radiology conferences. <laughs> I've never seen the speaker cry before. <laughs> so that was pretty interesting. Um, yeah, uh, what else can people do? Um, you know, uh, take the boards, for example. Um, you know, they, we uh, through the American uh, Board of Lifestyle Medicine, I think that's really uh, uh, really important to study for those boards and take them. It's, you know, if you're already doing internal medicine or lifestyle, uh, sorry, family practice, it shouldn't be too much trouble to study for them and 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 pass. Really encourage that. Uh, as far as changing your practice, I think it's going to be different for everyone. Um, I'm not sure how many people can actually do it as a consultation service the way we are especially if you're just starting out, I think it's certainly worth a try. And if that's something you're interested in, please give me a call. We can definitely talk about that. Uh, you know, we bill our lifestyle medicine visits with whatever 99, 99 code works for that, you know, that visit. And we're getting reimbursed. And, uh, you know, it's uh, right now, of course, there's no co-pays because of COVID. So that's kind of nice. Patients benefit from mm -hmm. that. Um, yeah, we're doing that right now. We're doing that through telemedicine. And, you know, if actually anybody's interested in trying with us, I know uh, we're in very early discussions with Yashoda, and we actually have someone else, uh, Dr. Um, Carolyn Trapp, who's a nurse practitioner in Michigan, who already is working with us, who is seeing patients using our, our electronic health record uh, and able to um, um, uh, able to see patients with us. And so we can do their billing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's uh, a... Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Says discuss how Zoom conferences help with community in the age of COVID nineteen. 
good question. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting. Um, people are, uh, I think, adapting very well to Zoom conferences. Uh, everyone has learned where the um, the mute button is. And because uh, this is my first time, what is this called? Field and field and stream or something? What are so we it's at? called Stream Yard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, um, I'm not used to this one yet, but you know, we've certainly gotten used to Zoom. And you know, it's really important. People are kind of feeling lonely right now. They're stuck at home, or you know, maybe not able to go to work. They're not able to see their kids or uh, their friends the way they're used to. But Zoom kind of allows people to to form a little community. Uh, and they really look forward to seeing each other because we're doing, you know, when they're in our jumpstart, they're seeing that uh, they're seeing each other at least twice a week. Uh, we do other programs. We do the chip program and we do uh, uh, the lift project as well, uh, which meets twice a week. So there's lots of different ways that we can have people interacting with each other using uh, you know, tele, uh, these uh, video systems, um, you know, and it's obviously safe, right? Because you're not getting exposed. So right. um, notice I'm not wearing my mask right now. I took it off. <laughs> There's nobody looking at the moment. It's it's yeah. seven o'clock coast. So yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So Ted, there's a question from one of our viewers, and it says, "Curious, what codes you guys use?" So can you maybe give a little bit more information about like the shared medical visit and how you would bill for that? Right. So how I'm you not billing for it. So uh, we are billing basically. Uh, if you have a shared medical visit. Um, you can bill the same as you would if there was one person in the room or 10 people in the room. So we're billing when there's 24 people in the room. Um, I'm not really good with the exact codes. You can uh, contact my practice manager. I don't want to get it wrong. But, you know, what is it? 99214, 99213, 99215. Those various codes we're using. So when, we're, when we were meeting in the office and we actually were doing the finger stick and the blood pressures, we could use the higher level codes and they're paying, you know, $150, $200 a patient. Uh, for doing that, uh, that's on day one and day 15. On the middle day, day eight, when it's just a um, um, the the the, uh, the, the potluck, the potluck. Mm -hmm. we're not doing finger stick, we're not doing any uh, you know bi biometrics. We would build that as a lower code. It's a, a I believe it's a G code that pays about twenty dollars. Uh, but again, we have that available to you. It's um our actual our, our practice was featured in the ACLM's uh, roadmap for billing. So that information mm -hmm. is that's available. Um, but again, I don't want to give the exact numbers because I know I'll get them wrong. I'm a radiologist, right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, staff, yes. But um, it, it, you know, we are successfully billing, and when we do fill a group, you know, we make a decent amount of money. So yeah. And for us, filling the group is about twenty-four. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and, so and there's like two physicians involved, correct? Two physicians involved. Well, right. When we have 24 people, we uh, because it's kind of an assembly line for the finger stick. I mean, we see each patient for three, and about three to five minutes before they go in and have breakfast. So patients arrive on our when we're doing it in our office. Patients arrive there at eight eight a.m. Uh, and they get their finger stick, they get their blood pressure and weight and all that. They see us individually in the office, or actually even better if they see us with their spouse or significant other. We love that. Uh, right. And then at 10 o'clock in the morning is when the actual program starts and we have breakfast for them. But now that we're doing okay. it all virtually, we're not doing the, um, we, we couldn't bill it as a shared medical visit because we're not doing those things. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're not, right. we're, not, we're not seeing them one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, we, we think we're gonna be able to do the, uh, the group medical visit. In other words, the lower level re reimbursement for the, uh, when people are checking in. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, during the week, and actually, we at some point we'll probably start trying to bill for the uh, um, the um, uh, the group sessions. But the problem with mm -hmm. that is, then it complicates the check-in because then you have to take attendance, you have to know who's there, and it just makes the whole thing a lot trickier. And you have to then get their insurance forms and all that. So you and I have talked about that. So for now, for the what we're offering now, what we call community jumpstart, there's no billing involved at all, no medical billing involved at all. So. Um, any, uh, any any billing that goes on would be between the patient the patient and their physician, and we would expect them to do one on one or two on one. You know, if it's a couple um, before and after the jump start. And what we'd hope, what we'd love it for you know doctors out there to uh, send their pa uh, to send their patients to us, but first 
to, to do to do the jump start, but first do a consultation with them, explain what the Esselstyn program is like, because you know pretty much everybody understands that. Get a, uh, send them to the lab. You know, get their cholesterol panel, their uh, and uh, blood sugar, and if, if necessary, get a hemoglobin A1C. And then after they're done with the program, get their labs again. And it's amazing how much different things are after two weeks. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, and we've had patients go through the program. One guy came with a hemoglobin A1C of, um, uh, it was about 13, I think it was 13.6 or 12.6, I can't remember exactly. Uh, and he was an untreated patient with diabetes on, on no medication. Uh, within three months, his hemoglobin A1C was 6.0. And now wow. his, hemoglobin, his hemoglobin A1C is 5.4 now. He doesn't have diabetes. If he went to his doctor now and said, you don't have diabetes. And all he did was go on, you know, eat, eat the way Dr. Esselstyn wants you to eat. Yeah, uh, he's very happy. He's lost a lot of weight. He feels great. I mean, it's just such a win all the way around. So yeah, I mean, it's such a wonderful, you know, fulfilling way to practice medicine. I think that's that's the big um, yeah. appeal. I think for most most doctors who want to do this. Yeah. Um, so so if somebody so it doesn't really matter which state the doctor the physician is in, you know, in, in terms of the of the jump start itself, what you're sort of recommending or saying is that they can reach out and then let's say they want to be part of the jump start. For themselves, we already talked about, you said, you know, they doctors can join. Uh, there's you guys are being really generous and giving a code where they can get do it for free. Um, and then Ted, at some point you had also mentioned maybe seeing if CME credits could be available for the positions. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yep, I can talk about that. So, um, you know, one of the things I mentioned earlier was how we had uh, this arrangement with the local uh, accountable care organization that has, you know, tons of tens of thousands of physicians in it. Uh, and we had the grant for 40 doctors to go through it. And we realized how powerful that was and actually how life transforming it was for many patients. But that was a, basically a six week, uh, kind of a didactic course. It was in person, but it was still didactic. Um, and we're, but since we're discovering that doctors really enjoy going through the Jumpstart, we thought, well, let's turn the Jumpstart into a CME program. So uh, the, the, the Jumpstart itself is 12 hours of contact and doctors then get to see how the Jumpstart is run. Uh, they get to see how patients interact with us, our facilitators, our coaches, and then they also get to participate in the group conversations. Uh, and then we're adding um, another eight hours of just uh, uh, online enduring materials uh, as part of the didactics. Now, I really can't tell you, I can't really advertise it. I can't advertise it. It's, we haven't, uh, it hasn't been approved yet for CME. We haven't actually even submitted it, but we're hoping by early July, our, our, our July jumpstart will be, Ju I think, July 11th. Uh, it's a Saturday. Um, and our, um, we're hoping by then to have a CME program that doctors can sign up for, and they'll get 20 CMEs and go through the Jumpstart and be able to observe how patients interact. I mean, I can't think of any other um, situation except for back when you were in medical school where you could, you know, uh, see how, uh, actually watch patient interactions as a group. Uh, and yeah, so, yeah. We're, right, right, we're very excited. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're very excited about that, but that's not quite ready, but we certainly will be announcing that when it is ready. Yeah, I mean, I knew what you were working on it, but I just thought it'd be kind of nice to let the audience know what's coming to down the pipeline. Right. So, right. Um, well, you know, so, one, thing I, one thing I forgot to mention actually is um, the patients also get daily emails and they're part, for going through the jumpstart, they're getting daily emails and they're in a closed Facebook group. And um, yeah, we try to make it as, as easy as possible for when, when we're licensing it to doctors to run in their office, which obviously we're not doing at the moment, we're trying to make that as easy as possible. It's not very expensive either uh, to do that. Um, but now we're trying to make it as easy as possible for doctors just to refer their patients into our Jumpstart. And we're also going to be giving the, uh, if you do that, we'll be giving you materials for how to talk to your patients so you'll understand you know, what they're going through, how to help them. Yeah. Through. So you can kind of have a stand, they can have a kind of a standardized experience. And what, you know, until we got kind of waylaid by the virus, we were collecting data so we could publish this. And we have quite a bit of data. And, and I know you showed that you're going to hopefully share that yeah. a little later. Uh, we've yes. got, you know, some great results that we'd love to share with people. Um, yeah. Getting any more questions in there? Is that yeah, I do. So uh, there's a question says, Dr. Barnett, how do you handle reducing insulin and blood pressure meds when someone starts the program to prevent hypoglycemia and hypotension? since the person makes such drastic dietary changes? What if their primary care refuses to reduce the medication? 
due to their lack of understanding of the power of a plant-based diet? That's a really good question. That's a great question. Um, so um, we haven't encountered any primary care doctors like that yet, uh, right? Uh, and we, at the moment, don't adjust people's medications. That's not our, our consider that, we don't consider that our, our role. However, we do have clinicians on staff and we do see patients in our office and, and now we're seeing them online. So, you know, we could certainly, we could certainly change the prescriptions ourselves uh, if, that, if, if we encounter that. But now we have, because we've been working in the Rochester area for so long, pretty much every doctor in Rochester already knows about us and is, you know, uh, they would, I think, be kind of embarrassed to not make an adjustment. We would certainly reach out to them if the patient says, you know, I'm having trouble uh, uh, communicating with my doctor. We might, we have a list of other providers in Rochester, uh, primary care providers who we encourage patients to, if they want to switch doctors. Um, but uh, we haven't encountered that. Um, and um, we do basically send a message to the primary care provider that, you know, your patient's going to be going through this program uh, and be, ex you know, you can pr uh, expect that they're their um, need for medication is going to drop. Uh, you know, luckily for, if they're just on cholesterol medication, having a low cholesterol is not particularly dangerous. And that, we're not worried about that. It's obviously, right. it's obviously blood sugar and blood pressure. And um, we would just deal, that, deal with that on a one on you know, an individual basis. But I'm, you know, if you're a primary care doctor who's thinking of doing this, then obviously you're in control and you would take care of that. If you're, if you're not, then you're going to have to work out something with the primary care docs or, you know, like a cardiologist adjusts the, you know, cardiac medications, right? Um, right. And that's perfectly legitimate, even though they, the, even though it's not really their patient. And, you know, the, the primary care doctor wants that. Right. Right. So let's say there's a physician in California and wants to enroll their patients in the Jumpstart program. So there's no, there's no issue with like across the state licensure and stuff because this is not a sort of a, this, this is not, I mean, how do you, how do you kind of circumvent the, you know, patient doctor relationship and you're practicing a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a state where you don't have a license? You know what I mean? Like you guys are in Rochester patients in California. How does that work with the jumpstart? Right. So so actually we make it really clear that this is not individual medical advice when they're doing the jumpstart. Uh, and that when they're not med being medically supervised, as opposed to when they're coming into our office where we do, you know, we do refer to that as being medically supervised. So this is a, a little bit different. Um, we uh, when we do have the discussion groups, we do have a you know a licensed provider in this uh, discussion groups sort of answering medical questions. But again, well, you know, for specific questions about what do I do about my medication, we refer them back to their doctor. Um, you know, we may say, this is these are the questions you should ask your doctor, and, and these are the things we think that they should do. But we want to make it really clear it's not medical advice. Uh, because as you say, you know, there are issues about medical licensure. On the other hand, we're not billing through insurance either. We're not billing it as a medical sure. business. Right, uh, right, yeah. Going, for, going yeah. forward, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, you know, and especially, you know, when I think about our patients with like diabetes, for example, they, you know, a lot of them actually kind of self-manage, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? Like, like they know how much insulin they need or whatever. So, I mean, and, and I know that there's a lot of education that goes in even before they get into the program where you guys are stressing over and over and over again of how powerful this quote unquote medicine is and to really watch out for those episodes of hypoglycemia or you know dizziness that indicates that their blood pressure is dropping. Um, so I think that you know and again this is about empowering patients, right? This is not so much like it's me and the primary care doc who are taking care of you. And right. you know, it's more like you are doing this change so that you can have a better health and therefore you need to also be involved in adjusting the doses of your medications. That's kind of how I see this you know, play out. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's correct. You know, it's really returning the locus of control back to the patient so that they become, you know, internal locus of control versus external. And, and it's very empowering for patients. They love it. They really do. And, and so many patients have, you know, they burst into tears because this is, you know, the first time in years that they felt like they've had control over what's happening to their body. It's yeah. so, very profound. It's very exciting. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, you know, it doesn't fit the typical. You know, the 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 medical model has always been the the physician as the boss, right? You know, yeah. 
you know, we're in control. And, um, you know, I think it's, uh, it's a little bit unnerving for patients and for some physicians to, to, uh, to have that, those roles changing. But I think it's really important. And you're just never going to get the benefits of lifestyle medicine without the patient being an active participant in their care. It's not passive in my And most of them love it. If they don't love it, they're not going to enroll in your program, right? Right. So, right? right. It, it, tends be, it tends to be self-selected, but that's okay. You know, there's 130 million people in this country or more <laughs> who could benefit from it, right? Yeah. If 1% of them sign up, you know, do, you know, go for lifestyle medicine, it would be great for all of us. And we'd all have work to yeah. do for them. And it's going to be a lot more than 1%. You know, we yeah. find, you know, when we find when people learn about it, you know, it's probably 90% of people really would rather take control of their lives. You know, if there's a few people it doesn't work for, well, I'm sorry. You know, we're not, it's not going to work for everybody, but that's, that's not an excuse not to do it. You know, yeah. Um, right. Yeah. And a lot of doctors yeah. will say, well, I'm not going to tell my patient to quit smoking because, you know, they're never going to do it. Well, a lot of patients will quit smoking when they, you know, right. and a lot of them did. I don't just by the same token, a lot of patients will do this once they understand it better or once they see what happens to their friend or their relative or their doctor lost all this weight and looks great, you know? Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a really good point because I would hear that a lot from my colleagues. Like, why bother, you know, patients are not going to do it. And it's like, you know, we're not going to tell somebody who, like you said, has continued to smoke or, you know, drink excessively. We're not going to just say, well, they're not going to ever change, but we shouldn't even say that, you know, we why are we bothering, right? So it's pretty much almost the same thing. Um, so talking about, you know, you had some great results from your Jumpstart programs, and I, I know you guys sent me a PDF. Would you like to uh, yeah. talk about that? And I can maybe share our screen and bring that up. Would be okay? sure. Yeah, if you could put the PDF and uh, um, show, up, show the uh, cholesterol, which is, I think, the first two pages. Okay. Yeah. So let me see how I... Yeah, screen here. Right. So this um, shows the total cholesterol drop, and um, yeah, you can see um, between days one, day one, and day fifteen. If you actually look at the table, it shows you that people who really need to benefit need to change the most, they have the most benefit. So why don't you scroll down to the table itself? Uh, you can see, so day one, it says, to, uh, that's the starting cholesterol on day one. And if you look in the middle there, the people, well, look at the yellow line. It says people with, you know, 201 to 240. And the average drop in cholesterol there was 34 points. Uh, yeah. For people who were even higher, 241 to 379, the average drop in total cholesterol was 64 points. And, wow. uh, right, but you can see how there's less of a drop in cholesterol the more normal you are. And you know, but That's even right. people, right? Even people in the 120 to 150 range are um, going to see some improvement. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty dramatic how, how much you see. Uh, right. and we, I know there's somebody on there whose cholesterol dropped 203. That seems like a. I, I remember somebody who dropped 150 points. She started at 299 and went to 1, 149 in 15 oh, days. Wow. Which, yeah, she's on there somewhere in the, in the data. But if you then scroll down wow. and look, at, yeah. I mean, it's this is LDL cholesterol. LDL cholesterol, and you can see again, uh, fantastic changes in cholesterol in, in, in LDL. Remember, we're, our goal is to get people under 80, uh, mm -hmm. and many people who you know start out with a, an abnormal LDL and get their cholesterol you know under 90 or under 80. It was just really dramatic, and it happened all within the first two weeks. Mm. Um, you know, we have you can show weight. weight I think weight. Weight loss might be the next screen. Down. Yeah, so there's the HDL. Yeah. Can you say a little bit more about HDL, Ted? And, you know, I know with plant-based, sometimes people have low HDLs and then people are concerned about the quote-unquote good cholesterol being low. Right. So that it's a great question. And the way we explain it to people is, look, your HDL went down and, you know, you were told that HDL is a good cholesterol and it's supposed to, you know, you'd like it to go up. But think of HDL as a, um, these HDL molecules as little dump trucks, and their job is to carry the bad uh, cholesterol back to the liver. And um, if you don't have as much bad cholesterol in your body, you don't need those little dump trucks. And, right. Right. And total cholesterol mm -hmm. is a reflection. Right. Total cholesterol is a reflection of LDL plus HDL um, plus a, a, you know a fraction of the uh, triglycerides. So um, it, the fact that HDL 
never surprising to us. We pretty much always see it. Uh, and we tell people, don't worry about it. The main thing we're concerned about, really, if we had one number, would be the LDL uh, mm. or, or the total cholesterol. So, right. and when, you know, both of those go down dramatically. We're very excited. Uh, and this, so that's kind of, just remember the little dump truck analogy. Patients love that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, triglycerides. Triglycerides tend to improve as well. Uh, yeah. We we tell people, don't worry too much. That can bounce around. Sometimes people's triglycerides may even go up uh, uh -huh. early on. Um, don't worry about that. Um, it, it, you know, it's, they tend to stabilize after a few months. Um, blood sugar, um, you know, which is the next one down. Um, you want to scroll down there? Fasting, blood glucose. Yeah. Yeah, obviously wow, that, those are some pretty dramatic numbers too. Very dramatic. Uh, and um, again, I'm sure probably people in the audience are not as surprised as your average doctor would be when they see numbers like this. But we've got yeah. these all docked over, right? Uh, over, at the, you know, the, the uh, you know two weeks, and then people lose tend to lose a lot of weight. And I mean, there's got to be a lot of water weight loss because you know, um, if you look there, I mean, some people, uh, what's the, if you're in the three to four hundred pound range, you know, the average, you know, some people lose twenty two pounds. Yeah. But clearly, that's not by burning up that many calories. Uh, there's yeah. got to be something else going on. But we, you know, we tell people, look, we're aiming for, a, you know, a couple of pounds a week is, is a really nice, you know, a weight loss rate. And if that happens over the course of a year, you've lost 100 pounds. Uh, right. Right. And that's pretty right. darn Right. Uh, for people whose BMI is over 25, the average weight loss is about five or six pounds. I think we have one that you go scroll down a little bit further. Uh, it may be, yeah, versus BMI. There you go. Uh, you can see the average weight loss by BMI. So people in the, you know, 25 to 30 range, they're going to lose on average about three pounds. The 31 to 40 range, you know, seven pounds. You have to remember that you have to really stratify it by, by uh, to cap the groups, because if everybody in your, in your um, jumpstart has a BMI over 40, you're going to look a lot better than someone else who has a group that's, you know, everybody's BMI is between 25 and 30, but that's, only because those people behave differently. It's not because you right, right. Mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. really to stratify your data when you're looking at it, and so that's what we've done. I mean, here. but a 22 pound weight loss, you know, in anybody over 15 days, that is so dramatic. And and of the and then then obviously they continue on, like you said, you know, right. one of the cardiologists lost like 90 pounds. I mean right. that. You don't get those kind of risks. And, you know, nobody's starving. That's the beauty of this plant-based thing, you know. Yeah. It's just yeah. changing what you eat, and you get these amazing results. It's, uh, I, yeah. I think that's why maybe a lot of people almost, like, don't believe it. It almost sounds too good to be true, you know. And that's when then you say, well, try it for yourself, right? I, that's what I always tell people. They're like, what if I starve and this and that and the other? I'm like, Listen, you can do anything for 21 days, 15 days, you know, and if you feel good and if you're seeing results, then do it for another 15, another 15. Like, don't think about, am I going to do this for the rest of my life, right? <laughs> right, right. So we tell people, don't be hungry. If you're hungry, eat. Uh, just, right. eat just eat the right food. And I remember we had one woman who actually had been vegan for a long time. She lost yeah. about 10 pounds during the program. She said, I, I could, didn't believe you, but I did. I took your advice anyway. So like at, at night before I went to bed, I'd be hungry. So I ate a potato or an apple. Yeah. Yeah. And she, still lost, she still lost a tremendous amount of weight. She's doing great now. So that yeah. the idea, don't be hungry. Just don't eat a sleeve of Oreos when you're hungry. Eat, right. Right. Eat a potato right. without anything on it or an apple or a piece, not some other piece of fruit. And people say, I can have fruit, but that's, you know, I have diabetes. That's bad for me, right? No, eat right. fruit. We don't have we don't have a diabetes epidemic because people are eating too much fruit. Yeah, right? we have a diabetes <laughs> epidemic because people are eating junk. Right, and and tell you that typically you don't encourage them to do intermittent fasting when they're doing the jump start. Is that correct? That's correct. We encourage you okay. know we, we encourage people to you know stop eating you know three or four hours before they go to bed, but that's to avoid getting sure. heart. Right. Uh, right. Don't, you know if people don't have heartburn issues and they want to do that, that's okay. Uh, right. they're, still, they're still going to lose the weight. Yeah. I have another audience question. So sure. they ask, what do you say to people who are already on a plant-based diet and who still have a high cholesterol, but it's not familial? I'm, I'm sorry, what was the last part about familial? 
there it's not familial hypercholesterolemia and they're already doing the plant-based diet and they still could have a high cholesterol i'm right. not sure I, if you can how you can distinguish if it's familial or not though right that's a great question i mean first of all no one can change their their, their genes so you do the best you yeah. can with the, the, the hand you're dealt but we find that people who go through the our jumpstart have never actually tried the sort of low-fat version uh, if they're truly, I mean, if they're truly plant-based, that I'm assuming they're not using any oil, because uh, that's what we mean when we say plant-based. A lot of people are vegan and are using lots of oil. Um, yes. The other thing is, is you know, for these two weeks, you're gonna you're gonna pretend you're on the Essel, you're gonna be on the Esselstyn program. You're not gonna right. use any high-fat plant foods. You use no avocado, no nuts, no coconut, you know, no olives, uh, and it is amazing. How many people say, gee, that I never thought of that, but that really worked. You gotta yeah. give it a you've got to give it a try. And people have to eat lots of oatmeal, you know, oatmeal with their, you know, breakfast every day with their oatmeal, because that'll help lower cholesterol, and lots and lots of greens, you know, all day long, because uh, that's gonna really um, improve endothelial function and, and help with blood pressure. But you know, I, I think that also helps with cholesterol because you know, all this fiber is helping to transport. The cholesterol, uh, you know, out in your stool, as opposed to, you know, getting caught up in the enterohepatic, you know, recirculation and uh, reabsorbing it. So, you know, avoiding all high-fat plant foods uh, and eating lots of greens. You know, getting oatmeal for breakfast every day. Uh, and I think if that doesn't work, then give Dr. Esselstyn a call, but or give us a call. <laughs> uh, we're happy to deal with that. But for the most part we find that works very dramatically. And just remember, Dr. Esselstyn's patients have been doing this for decades now. Oh, and, yes. And, and they're doing great. They're not suffering because they're not getting nuts and avocado. Right. You know, for right, the most right. part, you know, for the most part, I think nuts, a small amount of nuts and avocado are part of a healthy diet. But, uh -huh. you, know, you know, and if you look around the world and you see these populations where, uh, you know, nuts are part of the diet and it's healthy, Remember, that's not the population you're dealing with anymore. You're dealing with a population that's been is sick, and they've been sick for a long time, and uh, they're not starting as you know they they haven't been eating this way since childhood. They've been eating, I mean, eating healthy since childhood. They've been eating junk food since childhood, and you're dealing right. with different protoplasm. So, right. give, I, I really recommend giving this a try. You know, you can certainly do it with your patients. Put them on, you know, have them try an Esselstyn program. You know, without going through our jumpstart. I mean, there's nothing. Right. Uh, you know, that you can yeah. certainly. And I think, and I think it's important to point out that you know, with Dr. Esselstyn's program, mainly because he's really um, very cardiac focused. So people have already had stents or bypass surgery. So he's a lot more strict around, like even what we consider healthy whole food fats, like avocados and nuts and seeds. But for the regular population. You know, the jumpstart is really to get like that big boost. But like you had mentioned in the beginning of our conversation, once it's over, they are encouraged to go ahead and add back some amounts, you know, just depending on who they are, what they are, you know, kind of a personalization, correct? It's not like we're saying never eat avocados and nuts ever in your life again. And, but we also tell them, look, you're experimenting now. You're experimenting with right. uh, what your body will do. These two weeks have shown you probably what's the best your body's going to do. You know, maybe another week or two of going full Esselstyn, you're going to find out what's the best cholesterol you're ever going to see. And mm -hmm. you know, if people fall, or, you know, wander off the path, then and their cholesterol is high again, we say, look, you know, it worked for you last year. Try it again. Uh, mm -hmm. And also, maybe for people, some people can add back in some nuts and avocado, and still have a really, you know, low cholesterol. Like my cholesterol ranges between 90 and 120, and I eat nuts and avocado. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it, works, it works for me, but if you, I don't have heart disease. If you have heart disease and a high cholesterol and you can't keep your cholesterol under 150 um, with nuts and avocado, don't eat the nuts and avocado. You really want to get that cholesterol, especially your LDL down. Right. Right. And boy, I'm looking at these blood pressures too. This is like pretty amazing. You know, 60 point drop in people's systolic pressures were between 160 to 180. I mean, right. that is unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm glad you're showing this because this is really important. You know, most of what happens in the lifestyle medicine world becomes anecdotal. So, mm -hmm. you know, you see a patient, you advise them to eat a certain way, and they have a great outcome. But the problem is nobody believes you. 
because it's just another another anecdote. So that's why we've been really, really conscientious about collecting data on every single one of our patients. You know, they're all entered into our, obviously we have our own electronic health system, a health, a health record. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, if you're in practice, you have your own, but you really, really want to be able to document this and keep track of them yeah. because we want to be able to go back to the insurance companies. You also want to be able to, you know, have this ready for publication. So while we're still figuring out how to get, if people want to send patients through our jumpstart, we're very excited about that. Uh, we'd love it if you track the data and share it with us later on. We haven't formalized that part of it yet because obviously it has to be HIPAA compliant. Uh, but in the very near future, we'll, you know, depending on how many of your in the audience are participating with us in this, in the very near future, we will would want to be uh, having a formalized way of sharing the data. I think that's really good. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. Do you want to show the video? Yeah, that's what I was gonna I was gonna ask you. I can go ahead and show the video. So let me see how we I'm still sharing the screen. Let's get the video starting. The COVID-19 pandemic has changed everything. From frontline first responders to the most vulnerable among us, our attention is constantly being driven to what is happening and what to do next. Rochester Lifestyle Medicine Institute has developed an opportunity for doctors and their patients to work together during this critical time. We know that chronic diseases increase our risk of complications from COVID-19. And we know that the greatest contributor to chronic diseases in America is poor nutrition. It is our consumption of unhealthy animal products and processed foods that leads to heart disease, diabetes, and obesity, and now to weakness against the coronavirus. With more stress, people turn to unhealthy comfort choices like meat and cheese, chips and cookies, and candy and pizza for momentary relief. Yet, it is those choices which we inevitably regret that make us feel bad and more unhealthy by the day. So how can this negative cycle be broken? It begins with making a commitment to better nutrition. Since mid-March, Rochester Lifestyle Medicine Institute has been dedicated to transforming our evidence-based in-person 15-day whole food plant-based jumpstart program into a virtual Zoom meeting-based format, which is now live. We still provide the same education and skills building components of our medically supervised program, optionally monitored by your doctor, providing all the information and support needed to adopt a whole food plant-based diet. This one change can achieve significant positive health results and even reverse the chronic conditions putting people at higher risk from COVID-19. All from the comfort of home. The program takes place over 18 days and seven Zoom meetings. We provide cooking demonstrations with sample menus, recipes and shopping lists, which could provide enough staples to last for up to two weeks. Our presentations introduce the relationships between food and health and how to look inside ourselves to make the changes we need to achieve success. Our Zoom meetings are personal, interactive, and fun. For doctors, contact us for information about introducing whole food plant-based nutrition to your patients. For patients, we will give you a letter to send to your provider, letting them know you are about to change your life. It's a win-win plan to survive and thrive in the age of coronavirus. Thank you. So thank you, Wendy. That was uh, produced by Wendy. Our own, yeah. uh, produced by our own Robert Frankie, who's uh, uh, our director of communications and uh, has his own incredible uh, DHI story, dramatic health improvement story. Um, he's been on a uh, whole food plant-based diet now for several years and has lost over 100, you know, 115 pounds. 
and you'd never know by looking at them. So yeah, um, we're really excited. Yeah, we're excited to have Bob on the team for sure. And um, we are, one of the things one of the things that our patients all get is this incredible jumpstart guide. Uh, it's a forty-page guide um, that Bob and my wife Carol produced. Uh, my wife is also an expert on all this. She's uh, um, uh, uh, I would say a content um, a content producing. Uh, tiger she's pretty amazing <laughs> and um so that's we've uh, that a uh, jumpstart guide is now available as a pdf for the people participating but you can also we can also uh for a little extra fee we can send you the actual physical guide which is really nice i mean that was one of the nice things about doing it in our office is everybody was handed a, a beautiful physical guide uh so we're obviously still adapting to that so yeah any other questions no, I think, uh, boy, it's been an, I can't believe it's been an hour. It seems like hour. time passes. Yeah. <laughs> and I know you're super busy. I know you're still reading a lot of, uh, of films and, well, not films anymore, right? Everything is computerized. I remember those days when we would stick x-rays up in the x-ray box. I'm of right. that era. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. So, well, I really, yeah. I, re I really thank you so much. I really appreciate There was lots of really good information there. We're going to leave this on the uh, on the Facebook group pages so that if people need more information, they can go in there and check it out. And hopefully we can make this movement grow. Like that's that's yeah. the ultimate uh, yeah. goal well, here. Yeah. I mean, we're all in this to help each other. And, you know, we want other doctors to succeed. And, and we're here to do whatever we can to help other doctors succeed at this. Um, so, yeah, please uh, reach out to us if you have any questions. So. Well, I really, really thank you for taking the time to do this, Dr. Barnett. I really appreciate it. And I think, you know, lots of doctors hopefully are now feeling hopeful that it can actually, you know, they can actually do it. It's not sure. that impossible to do. So exactly. thank so, you so much. Yeah, actually, one more thing. Uh, Bob just sent me a message. Don't forget, uh, remind people that you can uh, email jumpstart at rocklifemed.com. And uh, go, uh, you can uh, check out the uh, information page about Community Jumpstart. And our next one actually starts on June 13th. So if people want to sign up, June 13th is the, the next one we're running. So great. All right. Awesome. Show. Thank you so much, Ted. Take care. It was really Bye. wonderful talking to you and seeing you. And stay safe. You too. Okay. Take care. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye now.